where, where's the disconnect? Where is the disconnect? Baby, it's a red flag. I'm gonna I'm do what I've been doing. I'm gonna be a bad client. Red flag. At some point or another, you are going to deal with a bad client. And I'll say this, it took me a while before I got to bad clients, or maybe it just kind of took me a while to realize like, this is just not a good fit, okay? This is not a good fit. And I'll say this, I do not think that clients set out to be a bad client. Like they don't sign on with you like, yeah, I'm gonna get them hell, just wait till I get to them. I don't think that's the case. It's just something that happens. So in this video, I'm gonna be giving you eight red flags that you're dealing with a bad client and what you can actually do about it. And for some of these, you can actually find out during the discovery call. So this is before you even sign this client on, you'll be able to recognize some of these red flags. So that's why I'm telling you, cause I want you to be able to recognize it upfront. If you're new here, my name is Erica and I'm your personal social media management coach. Now, if you're ready, let's jump right on into it, shall we? I cannot tell you how many times my students have come back to me like, I've been working with that client you told me not to work with for about three weeks now and I'm ready to fire them. Yeah, because you knew and I knew, you saw the red flags, I saw the red flags. We both knew that this was not gonna be a good fit for you. But here we are, three weeks later, and you asking me, should you fire them? The answer is yes. The answer was, you should have never got with them in the first place. But alas, we all live and we all learn. The very first red flag I want you to look out for is if you are talking to a potential client, right? And you're like, tell me more, tell me what you're looking for for social media with a social media manager or to happen on your social media, right? And they're like, I just want more followers. Well, everybody wants more followers. Most people do, right? So well, what else? What else? Like, tell me, you know, what are some of your goals that you have in place? I really don't have any goals. I just want to sell this product and I want more followers. No. Mm -mm. let's back up now if you really want to work with this client you can educate them on why social media is more much more than just having followers but y'all that is a red flag if that's the only thing that they focus on and even after you talking to them they're like yeah I hear you but how many followers can you get me or you'll sometimes see job descriptions where they're like I'm looking for somebody who can increase my following if you've been following me for a while on here, you've been subscribed to me, then you know social media is a lot more than just um, getting followers, right? And you also know as a social media manager, it is not your job to solely sell for your client. Social media management is so much more than just that. And you're gonna have to let the client know that. This brings us to our second red flag. If you are talking to a potential client and they do not have any business goals. So what that means is a lot of times, like they said, okay, I want to sell this product. And you're like, okay, how many do you want to sell? And they're like, I don't know. Well, what do you want to do? Do you want to get email signups? I don't know. Huh. <sighs> Y'all, that, ooh, just even saying it, honey, like that just gives me anxiety because what am I supposed to do with your social media if you don't even know what you're doing in your business? Social media, your business, social media helps your business. But if we don't know what we're doing in the business, I don't know what I'm doing in the social media. We cannot work together. The third red flag you want to look out for is people who try to haggle your prices. So if somebody says to you, well, you're just starting out like, should you really be making that much money? Like, should I, should you really be charging that? I need you to stay up my business because what I'm charging, I mean, it, it's got something to do with you, but don't, don't try me. Okay. Do not try me. You have set your prices and what you want to be paid. Now, if you want to lower your pricing for somebody, fine, but do not feel pressure because somebody tells you to lower your prices. I'm telling you, this is a red flag. This is a cheapskate. I don't care because if they want to pay lower, they can go somewhere else, right? You deserve to be paid what you desire to be paid. And yes, let's be reasonable with ourselves. Let's be reasonable with these pricings. But again, do you really want to work with somebody who's trying to nickel and dime you? Because now I'm thinking, well, shoot, are you even going to pay me on time? I, now I'm nervous because I don't know what you're going to do. And also I'm just thinking, I feel like those are the type of people who come back later on and after one month or even before a month, y'all, it may be two weeks and they're like, Hey, I'm paying you $900 and I don't see any results. <sighs> Not when there's clients out there who will pay you what you are worth or who will just pay you because that's your rate. I'm not dealing with that red flag. 
The next red flag is somebody who does not respect your boundaries. You have boundaries in place because you want to. So a boundary you may have in place is, I'm not answering emails after 6 p.m. Why? Because I don't want to. Why? Because I have a family. Why? Because I like to go out and have fun with my friends and I don't want to do any work after 6 p.m. If that's you and that's the boundary you have in place, then that's your boundary, right? So if you have clients who are consistently, or a client who's consistently reaching out to you after 6 p.m. with emails or, hey, why didn't this do, or why can't I have an idea, do, 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 that's somebody who may not respect your boundaries. And I'll say this, a lot of times these type of clients, they're not trying to disrespect your boundaries, but some are trying to push the limits. And other times they are simply in work mode. So they may forget that, hey, I probably shouldn't reach out to Erica after 6 p.m. because I know she's not gonna respond. But the moment you respond, we probably need to do a video on boundaries. Because the moment you respond, you're letting them know that it's okay to reach out to you because you'll respond. So. Make sure that you have firm boundaries in place and that you have communicated that to the client. Also like with revisions, if you say you're going to give one or two revisions and they're trying to ask for five rounds of revisions, or if your package only has three posts per week and they're trying to get six, where, where's the disconnect? Where is the disconnect? There isn't one. They just may be a bad client. The next red flag is if they ask you to work for free, or if they say, they start talking about how they'll give you exposure. I have had a client like this and she was like, working with me will give you so much exposure. She was paying me, but it was also like this thing on the back end, right? Of like, working with me, I'll be able to tell this person about you. And that sounds exciting, right? Like when you hear somebody willing to kind of speak on your behalf or give you referrals, it sounds exciting, but you have to have a little bit of discernment and understand where this is coming from. And when she said this to me, and actually my friend, we were working on a project together, it, it, it kind of rubbed us both the wrong way. And what ended up happening, she did not end up paying us for the entire um, project that we did. And it was a whole mess. But she was so fixated on, I'm gonna give you exposure. Like we were just like coming out the gate. Like we didn't have any experience already and people didn't know about us. And it was like, it was real tacky. It was a real situation. So I'm saying that to learn from my mistakes because after that, I could tell she was gonna be a bad client. Like there was red flags there. And I had to put new things in place in my business, like in my contracts and just really, really, really make some changes because getting exposure, anybody who says that, uh, girl, who you think you are? <laughs> the next red flag I want y'all to think about is people who do not respond to your emails, your proposals, whatever it is in a timely fashion. So if you send a proposal out and tell somebody, Hey, I'm gonna give you a week. You even follow up with, uh, follow up with them and it's crickets. In my experience, um, sometimes that is the tone for the relationship. So if you're going to be sending content to them for approvals, a lot of times you won't get a response because some clients are just unresponsive. It, and I say that that doesn't make them a bad person, but sometimes it can make them a bad client. If you rely on feedback or your personality type is, you know, that you need to get feedback and you enjoy that. Um, somebody who is just unresponsive may not be a good fit for you. If you're like, look, I know that you're unresponsive. Is it okay if I just keep rolling with things? Then yeah, like keep on rolling. But that can definitely be a red flag if you can't even get a simple email back or it takes them two weeks to try to approve content. It can be a lot. Another red flag. If somebody ignores your process and does things the way that they want to do it. So for example, if we're talking about getting content approval, you know that, okay, I'm going to send you content every Monday. I need feedback by Wednesday. And they're like, well, I prefer for you to do things, send me content on Fridays and I'll give it to you by that following Tuesday. Sometimes, yes, you can make these exceptions. Sometimes it just works like, yeah, I can do that. That's not a problem at all. But if you know that you, maybe you have a team, right? And so you have a content creator, like somebody on your team who actually makes the graphics for your clients and that doesn't fit their schedule then pay attention to things like that. And because sometimes, and talk to your client because sometimes they'll be like, yeah, it's fine. You know, I can do it your way. But they're adamant about, and you see a pattern of them not respecting, again, your boundaries and how you do things in your business and your processes. Pay attention to that type of thing. And if you're okay with it, you're okay with shifting things in your agency, go for it. But if you, you're not, 
and you need things just the way. Maybe you have ADHD. Maybe you just, you run and you work really, really well by a set schedule for all your clients. Then you know that this type of client may not be the best for you. And the last red flag that I want you to pay attention to. If you have a client who gives you endless changes, and I have experienced this, they give you the content, right? So they mean they give you the photos they want you to use. They're giving you a few little ideas, like some quotes or something like that. You're designing it. You're using their branding. They have change after change after change. They are nitpicking every little piece of content you create before you even get to post it, before you even get to test out this content, baby, it's a red flag. I had a client like this and I had a person on my team who was creating the actual content. She was amazing, first of all, she's an amazing graphic designer, but she was using everything that the client had given us. And then the client was like, well, I don't like this picture. I don't want to use this. Sis, then why did you put that in our Dropbox of all the content we could use? Why is it here if you don't want to see use it? You know, so pay attention to things like that. And I mean, with that client, we found out her background is very strict. She's a micromanager. Some clients, you have to realize this is their baby and it's going to be hard for them to give it up. So for you, is this somebody that I want to work with? You have to make that decision. So there's two things I want you to do when we're talking about having an agency and having clients, especially having several clients. I need you to understand your boundaries. If I need to do a video on boundaries, please let me know. But I need you to understand what you like and what you do not like. What will you accept and will, what will you not accept in your business? And I'll be honest, a lot of this stuff happens over time. So how I told you, uh, like I had this experience with this bad client, I had to put things in place. Some of it is only going to happen through experience, but there are going to be certain things that you know up front that you like and that you don't like. Pay attention to those things. Notate them. Notate them. Is that it? Notate? Make a note of it. The next thing that you want to do is communicate your boundaries. And I know for some of y'all that's scary. It doesn't have to be mean. You're not going to, you don't have to be mean to your clients when they cross a boundary or they're doing something that you think may be like a red flag and you want to question it, but you have to advocate for yourself. I cannot stand up for you. I can't go in. I would love to do it, but you have to talk to your clients, right? And I can guide you the right way. I do that for my students, right? I guide them and what to say and how to do the conversation, but you have to advocate for yourself. So this is your baby. This is like their business is their baby. This is your baby. And you have to show up and tell people how you want to be treated. So you have these conversations, you have it through email. You can have it through a phone call. Um, I like to document things. So I would say email it. And then you, when you get on a phone call, you can talk about it more. And so if the conversation goes good, they understand where you're coming from, keep on going. And if it doesn't go good and they're like, what you talking about? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I've been doing. I'm going to be a bad client. <laughs> If they're like that, then you know that it's time to end the relationship. So maybe at the end of that three months, you go ahead and end that relationship. So you already know what to do. Let me know down below if you've ever dealt with a bad client with any of these type of things, or maybe you noticed these things, but they weren't a bad client, whatever the case, let me know down below. And until next time.